Well, welcome, Jacob and Stefan. It's so nice to see you, and I'm so excited to hear more about your new book, Media and Psychoanalysis. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Where do you all want to begin? <laughs> um, yeah, we can. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll begin. We thanks thanks for for having us. We can we'll talk a little bit about the book uh, in general, perhaps to to start with, and why we why we decided to write this book. So this book uh, it came out um a few months ago now uh and both of us work in this in this area um what we could sort of call research on the media that makes use of, of psychoanalysis or we could also call it uh, psychoanalytic media studies um and we have been collaborating for for a number of years we've been working on these topics for for quite a while and we were quite keen um to sort of provide an overview of this field uh and a critical overview of that as well so this has been growing for for quite a number of years now and often um students or also colleagues they um might find a way into this uh, area through for example studies on or work on uh, social media uh, often that might be uh, drawing on Lacan it might be sort of drawing on Lacanian or also sort of Zizekian accounts um but there is a much much larger history to that and that really goes in a way we could say it goes back to Freud himself um of course because Freud uh is kind of we could say he's actually the first kind of media media theorist in a way because he he used um examples that were about the media of his of his time poetry and then um I mean, we begin the book with freud's kind of really detailed um reflections on kind of the first forms of publicly displayed advertising that he saw in in i think it's in it's in italy right um sort of a, a bit like a, a, a that worked a bit like an animated gif almost um ahead of ahead of its time always sort of repeating a few frames so we could begin with freud but then we we of course th this uh, this this sort of um field uh, has its origins in kind of work in the in the 1960s um uh, work on film specifically psychoanalytic film studies uh people like i think it's like laura mulvey um this is also often then called screen theory and so on so we so we begin uh this book with a, with a focus on film um to show that actually this has it has a much larger history it has a much longer history that we want to so we want to map and we do uh, map this history in the book, um, beginning with film, uh, moving on to television, radio, and then we kind of jump on onto more contemporary uh, uh, um, uh, forms and, and platforms and social media and the internet and so on. Uh, but then secondly, what we're also doing in the book is to, it's called a critical introduction. So it's not just called an introduction and we, uh, critically discuss all of those different thinkers, those different ideas, those different psychoanalytic schools as well. We want it to be as kind of, I think, inclusive as possible in terms of the different schools that we talk about in the book. Uh, and then we also continue to develop uh, those ideas as well. Mm -hmm. So I think those were our two aims. Yeah. And also, we I th I think also after quite a while that we hadn't worked together, we also were looking for a project <laughs> to start working together again. And uh, you know, and so when we, I think you know, like we have not only collaborated for a couple of years, Jakob. It was kind of the tenth anniversary of our first collaboration. Yes. I think we started. We we met first in oh, 2012 or. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the book came out 
in 22 already, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it was kind of, it marks the 10th anniversary of like, you know, us getting to know each other and then also starting to work with each other within the field of what can now perhaps be called digital, like psychoanalytic digital media studies. And when the two of us first met, that was Candida Yates who, um, who mm -hmm. reported via mail quite excitedly like yo and i have a and i have somebody at uh, the university of east london back then who also does that kind of stuff and so we were not many people back then or at least like we felt as though we were not so many so um the the if you can call it a field i mean still we are not so many people who work in psychoanalytic digital media studies, but it has grown, you know, like we, we are no longer alone. Back then it was you know, perhaps two handful of people, but so um, in the meantime, it had grown. So we also, we wanted to map that, but as Jakob says, we also want to show that because digital psychoanalytic media studies were kind of somehow kept apart from the more traditional uh, psychoanalytic film studies that were then integrated more or less into cultural studies. So we wanted to show what hadn't been done before. We wanted to show the continuities also in those traditions. And uh, perhaps well, not only the continuities, also, also the important differences and then see, and I think this is also part of our critical project, kind of see how we can critically connect those, like perhaps kind of um, create the continuities also a little bit, kind of show where uh, those approaches have things in common, where they, where they differ and like how they can be brought together in a productive way. We can push them, push those traditions further. Well, that was, I think that was the, that was the pool of ideas in which we were swimming when we started to write. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, Jacob, you were the first person I knew working on psychoanalysis and digital media studies your, mm -hmm. with your first book, I think. Was that your mm -hmm. first book? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when yeah, it first that came was on the first talk. podcast, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That was, that was the book coming out of your work, uh, on, of your PhD mm -hmm. work. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was the I think I, I we, we met first in an early phase of that. And mm -hmm. uh, what was so fascinating about about uh, Jacob's work was that he was also developing ideas and like, you know, um, uh, perspectives on social digital media from out of reality television. I mm -hmm. thought that was very much to the point. Mm -hmm. mm. So up my alley that <laughs> yeah and it's, it needs to be up all of our alleys because we're all living in this yeah so <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah we, we we perhaps we could so we could we could talk a little bit we could very briefly uh, we could talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the about the different um, kind of themes that we that we cover in the chapters. Of course, we want we 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 want the book to be read, so we're not uh, we're not going to kind of give away everything. Um, but we we, as as Stefan also said, we kind of begin with um, with film, and and in a way that's really where that's really where uh, this kind of work really seriously begins. Um, in terms of trying to trying to understand uh, the content of film and and um, from the beginning, kind of from the sixties, what kind of work being done in the in the UK and in, in in France as well, and then a bit later on in the in the US is comes from a distinctly sort of feminist perspective in in terms of uh, trying to understand the kind of representational practices of mainstream cinema at, at the time which, which and someone like Laura Mulvey is is really is really a significant there and of course her term the male gaze has become 
it has become so kind of commonplace it's everywhere um and it's being used i mean all the time everywhere and probably many people who who use it uh in, on an everyday level journalists or you know students and so on they probably don't even know that you know that's a, that's that term Mulvey has kind of created mm. um in 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 relation to trying to kind of understand how actually the the kind of um composition or the different elements of film uh and, and kind of mainstream hollywood cinema at the time and from the kind of 1930s and so on worked to uh, constantly kind of reinforce this male gaze in terms of how how female bodies are being sort of looked at by the camera by the by the protect by the male protagonists of the film and then as a result also by the audience the audience was also mostly, of course, male, um, at, at, sort of at the time, or certainly in the kind of 1930s, 19, or well, certainly 1940s and so on. Um, that's kind of the begin. So, so, and already at that, already at that time, uh, this question of um, objectification becomes kind of quite, quite significant. Um, um, and in terms of how that gaze kind of renders or, or turns uh, female bodies into sort of objects. And of course, uh, those are then so sexualized or body parts are kind of zoomed in on and things like that. And that's actually that kind of idea of ob objectification, how it's then maybe more kind of implicitly developed by Malfi is, is something that then also kind of runs through the book's uh, chapters that follow on from that when we then talk about um, dynamics or kind of interpersonal dynamics that we see on social media when we try to understand social media from a psychoanalytic perspective or uh, when we look at um, kind of politics and how um, politics and the political plays out online plays out on social media um, how sexuality has become has been transformed through the digital and so on how how um questions of ai and and gaming and so on have have been kind of shaped by the digital in all of these different examples or different different chapters there is an element of uh, objectification kind of present in different ways mm, yeah especially also because because whatever you do on the digital um, um most people well like nearly all people will be aware of of uh, a machinic gaze being directed at them because you're leaving traces you are under observation in whatever you do and um and have the feeling that you're like <laughs> that you're in the process of constructing your kind of digital self kind of uh, objectified, objectivated version of you that is kind of in the, like, that becomes kind of, um, that arises differently in the, in the data analytics of, um, of different platforms, uh, with the data then being sold to um, different um, interest groups, and then like, you know, kind of, and then you look different, you are being differently objectified each time and so um we have been very interested in kind of um, pushing the idea of the gaze further into those into those um situations and scenes of objectification and have tried to kind of cross read it with a lot of the literature existing the more positive literature existing from a psychoanalytic perspective on digital media that have been um, that have fronted much more kind of like pro-social positive aspects of um, recognition and acknowledgement like you can mm -hmm. you know like um, theories that that hold and um, absolutely rightly so also that hold that um, um, online spaces are spaces for people and especially then young people young adults to get recognition from we try to kind of like balance those two interests up against each other to see like okay so how is this 
acknowledgement coming about? What are the cultures that um, that constituted, but also how are those youth cultures then uh, afforded, limited um, by uh, platform architectures and by platforms, commercial interests? And um, so how do different forms of acknowledgement, of recognition, but also then of pathological, quasi-pathological forms of recognition in the forms of objectifications then um, um, constructed in, in, in specific situations on platforms. And how did you all get interested in media studies in the first place and specifically looking through it, looking at it psychoanalytically? Yeah, really interesting. For me, it was, you know, I, um, I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm a bit of a typical child of my generation and uh, I think my generation is not, not exactly Jacob's, because I think Jacob, you're like perhaps like almost ten years younger than I am. But I'm kind wow. of like I studied, I studied in Germany in Berlin in the 1990s. Um, like my like what was back then called a magister, which is what now be kind of the BA and MA system together. And I was like one of those classical 1990s children of kind of like, yeah, I, I want to study and I want to go to the big city and I'm interested in the humanities and and culture and arts and literature, but also in media, something with media, right? So I studied like you needed to have two majors or a major and two minors back then. So I studied English Lit and media studies. And you, you know, were prime for psychoanalysis. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm sorry that, that, like, to cut a long story short, I did not really, like, you know, media and communication studies, it was much more kind of communication studies and very kind of, I then also seemed to have chosen the wrong university, kind of Humboldt University in Berlin would have been a much more fun place. Mm -hmm. But then, like, Freie University was very kind of quantitatively oriented mm -hmm. and like, oh, I did not find anything there. But then I found an old kind of Frankfurt school, kind of second, third generation Frankfurt school professor, Hermann Hamann, who I really like. I, I, you know, I loved his stuff and we were doing things on Adorno and Benjamin in exile and kind of like, you know, kind of media aesthetic writings of Benjamin, like these things. And there was like, there was so much psychoanalysis in there. And whenever psychoanalysis came up, it resonated strongly. That, you know, that it, it had me then. Um, and then I found like for my PhD, I like, you know, I, I actually asked Hermann Harman, like if he knew somebody. And uh, and then together with this back then, like um, um, a postdoc, like they were kind of pointing me to this uh, ego psychologist, like psychoanalytic ego psychologist. I mean, ego psychology has fallen into kind of this, like into you know dubious uh, repute. Um, but like uh, Ernst Chris, like an ego psychologist, then like migrating first to England and then to to the US, like he did propaganda studies during the Second World War on the Allied side. And so I got, um, that's what I, that's what I got interested in. That's so cool. I didn't know that. I did my PhD on. So I, you know, for my take on psychoanalytic media studies, I went even further back than the 1960s and 70s mm. screen theory and film. I was, you know, kind of, I looked at like psychoanalytic traces of psychoanalysis within the very early communication studies, which were propaganda studies. Really. Mm. Which, of, and, which, which, of course, also Adorno kind of did some, he also did yes. some work on that in the, yeah, in the yeah. US. And, and what is very interesting is that, of course, that um, Adorno also worked with Lazar, Paul uh, Lazarsfeld for a time yeah. in, mm -hmm. in the US, and, and he is often sort of seen as the as the founding father of, of, of kind of communication studies or, or kind of the US type of media studies and so on. And that probably also not, I don't know, to, I don't know how widely known that, that is, so that there is there as a kind of sort of psychoanalytic angle, perhaps present there a little bit as well, yeah. um, which yeah. is which is very interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm. like it's it was so fascinating working that out a little bit because Ernst Chris, the guy that I did my PhD on, he um did not become so widely known in communication studies because he pulled out right afterwards because mm. he wanted to kind of fix psychoanalysis in England and uh, like in Great Britain and and the US then afterwards, but he sat in all those committees then also with mm. uh, Paul Lazarsfeld, Harold Leswell is the other mm. with the LA, um, like uh, like the other big guy in the yeah. funding of communication studies, and they like he had quite a uh, uh, heavy influence on them. And you can then see also traces of psychoanalytic thinking, especially super fascinated in the books by Harold Leswell. Mm. But um, like, yeah, I mean, he is hardly ever read anymore in communication stuff. Mm. 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 But, so that's, that's, that's true. I love how there's always more to learn and know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I also love those professors that are like lifelines, you know, when you're feeling so stuck and I'm in the wrong program or you're in the wrong place. And you find someone they're just like it's such a lifeline you know yeah mm. really was complete that change that was such a game changer for me finding these small seminars that seem to be so on the margins of like communication science at Freie university and it was such a i mean now comes the cliche breath of fresh air but it mm. yeah but it really saved like I, I i might have dropped out of communication studies and look at me now like i am like permanently employed at a media and communications institute <laughs> mm. and i think i think that's also that's also that's also something where we are quite keen to i mean we've been constantly i think trying to uh push um our kind of kind of approaches or this that what we're interested in into the kind of mainstream of our discipline um whereas there are also many perhaps um thinkers or some of the colleagues who we discuss in the book they are actually kind of they would probably situate themselves in in dis other disciplines maybe in philosophy or certainly the perhaps the more lacanian thinkers and so on um they they are sort of a bit more on the on the outside, uh, which is which is com to completely fine. I mean, that's 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 great. Um, but that's why we also wrote this book because, in sort of gently, I mean, forcing it perhaps on people who might otherwise not encounter um, this way of thinking. So, so what uh, it, the the book is very 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 accessible i mean we think it's it's very it's a very good introduction to somebody who might not know anything about psychoanalysis so the um the introduction chapter even though it seemed that seemed like a kind of like an impossible task but i think we we do we 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 sort of done it, it introduces psychoanalysis itself first of all um fairly fairly uh, briefly but but all the different main schools are, are kind of introduced because then we return to them in the book, Lacanian, Kleinian, object relations, Freudian, uh, and so on. Uh, Laplanche, perhaps as well. And um, and then each chapter also starts, we, we, we sort of say, sort of guide the reader and say, okay, these are our key terms that we use in this chapter. These are the key questions that we use in the chapter. So, um, also, students can can then kind of work with this very well. So it's a bit like a textbook, but we wanted it to be much more than textbook because because we are also that's why there is this critical this the term critical in the in the introduction and because there was a time in the in the nineteen sixties or nineteen seventies when there was much more of a dialogue between. Uh, what we could call kind of mainstream media studies and in particular cultural studies that's kind of really emerging at the time in, in the UK and then in the US and psychoanalysis. And there were really, really, really interesting, quite heated debates between those two disciplines um, uh, that are quite interesting, quite interesting to read. And, and that has really stopped. So, so that that kind of that kind of engagement or perhaps that interest has stopped. And even though this is a growing area, but we but we feel that more can be done to perhaps re 
invigorate, revitalize that, that, mm. that those kind of debates uh, uh, a bit more. Yeah, and and also in continuation, also confused to to put psychoanalysis a little bit on the on the map of media studies and cultural mm. studies again, because I mean it's been it's been very kind of a lot of my students are, I mean I'm using the book in one of my courses, and I'm I mean like my 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 thinking is very much in this book, so I'm using I'm using that in everything that I do academically, so it mm. comes up. But like there's specifically one course where I'm using it, and um, there are a lot of students who are interested in post-human theories. Um, uh, Deleuze and Guattari, or like basically Deleuzean, Spinozian stuff, like Brian Masumi, um, like these things, which I also like appreciate a lot. And, um, and you know, I, I realize I, I find quite often that um, there is there is actually less of less resistance than I thought. It's just a lot of people don't know psychoanalysis mm -hmm. that well. But I mm -hmm. really, really are so interested in it, really eager to to read and like um like what what the book does pretty well. Yeah, I think you're right, Jakob. It is very accessible, but just like like thumbing through it again just now, I also realized like because of the way that we wrote it and we wrote like almost every sentence is a co-production. It 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 has like it it is dense prose, right? It is, yeah. It's quite um, it's quite dense and it is demanding of its readers. So we are kind of like, um, I'm I'm quite. I found it interesting how how we are come, like, how we manage quite often sometimes not, but quite often we manage to pull readers in quite well. At least like this reader here, myself, I was like, ah, interesting, like. Kind of like finding pretty good ways to um, get quite theoretical and quite like heavily so, but then kind of countering that with a good example, um, making you know making it making it kind of accessible, then like kind of almost pushing it out of the ex like kind of like newbie accessibility, but then kind of reining it in again. I uh, really really like that. So um, it is a book for newbies. It seems to be serving, like it seems to be having a really good function because people seem to be interested in psychoanalysis and mm -hmm. are thankful for the book mostly. I'm really happy about that. But then it also kind of um, like confronts people with difficulties without, I think, I hope, I hope we're not kind of overdoing it, but it's it's not all kind of like at a at a beginner's level. I, I'm, I'm proud to say. Yeah. Kind of we're pushing things pretty far without mm. making it impossible to follow us. <laughs> no, but I find the same thing to be true when you present psychoanalytic ideas in a way that's like not full of jargon and that people can understand, even if they're not familiar with them beforehand. People are usually pretty into them because everyone is living in this psychology and everyone seems to be able to find a way that it resonates with them, especially if you don't label it like. Even if you don't tell them this is psychoanalysis, they like get this like buzz where they're like, hmm, I've heard that's mm. not so good or whatever. Yeah. But like if you present the ideas, people generally are interested in them and want to learn more. Mm. Mm. And, and and of course, of course, I mean with with psychoanalysis, I mean there is always well that that ma it makes me think of there is this question of um I mean psychoanalysis goes kind of goes to where it where it where it hurts right it, you know it, or, or it's a it's a i mean it, of course it's also first a clinical um technique i mean to um confront the subject with you know in in many cases i mean in terms of in terms of therapy and so on pretty but we were just talking about that in stefan's last podcast yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. It, that it actually developed you know the kind of cultural studies branch and the clinical studies branch really developed at the same time because freud was doing both so we're trying not even to prioritize the clinical necessarily exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 that's 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 true um and and also that it's not just about kind of um it's not just about i don't know the 
you know, trauma or, or like the, or, 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 I mean, there is an emphasis on, there is an emphasis on, and also in the book, I mean, on conflict, on, you know, very, some things are, you know, of course, very distressing or, or are quite negative or we've talked about objectification, we've talked about, or aggression and, and, and the things that go on on the internet are often so destructive, are so, um, toxic are so kind of governed by dynamics of objectification or othering or also self-objectification as well and so on but then i mean there's always an, a different side to that as well or there is always there is always this this um uh, di 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 this kind of dynamics of there is there is objectification but then there are also questions of recognition of or we could call it uh, containment in a different way, or, or, or um, being seen on mm. online and so on. So it's always about that kind of, it's always about that that contradiction, and I guess how that is managed. Mm. Yeah, that's what I also that's what I like about the psychoanalytic approach to to digital media because digital media is often such a destructive, abject place where like you know. Uh, like oh you know like oh, just a space full of porn and toxic masculinity and you know like I mean I have colleagues who would say like oh no you know like don't give me that I would you know like people who really don't want to go there and I I find it I I find it interesting to go there because I'm like you know the psychoanalysis kind of like let, allows one to approach that with the question of like okay like what function does it what what function does this have what what role does it play what is compensated by it what you know what what appeal is does it supposed to have to me to the you know to the recipient of it like what shall i do with it it's like it's such a relentlessly relational approach right even there where you really want to say like you know like as some some uh, some like academics in in our field like you know, no, I really don't want to have anything to do with it so you take yourself out of the re equation but you know psychoanalysis kind of pushes you into this relationship oh you know like mm -hmm. this like even where like and especially where people enact something or you know act something out or in or however you want to you want to then see it like that is so hard to take you know there is something that they want you to take and what is it right so it th that is really what i find so 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 fertile with it mm. and jacob i'm not letting you get away you have to tell us your origin story with media studies yeah. and psychoanalysis as well oh. <laughs> um, uh, i mean my I think my because well I also wanted to I also kind of was very drawn to uh, studying sort of yeah me, the the media and I'm there I also did a kind of media and communications uh, degree and masters and so on but uh, um, and I didn't really have any psychoanalytic exposure during my undergrad um, but then I learned so, um i think through um through this documentary the first sort of uh, uh, zizek documentary the you know the astra, astra taylor zizek documentary that's how i kind of got in contact with um zizek then initially and then i mean the kind of lacanian ideas uh, as as I, as is the case for many i think mm -hmm. um and because i remember i i i, I had actually done or sort of learned about Freud in in kind of in high school, and I, I absolutely hated it. I mean, I was bored to death by, it. and it's unbelievable to say that now, where I'm <laughs> very, where I'm very. I mean, I'm almost a Freudian, <laughs> so I, 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 it was absolutely boring uh, then. But but um, that's how I that's how I then kind of got into got into uh, those questions, and what also really struck me then looking then at what I was kind of studying or learning at the time, uh, kind of mainstream um, media studies and so on, that those approaches, and I think that's actually still true 
today in a way uh they don't there isn't really a theory of uh the subject or there isn't really a theory of um human kind of kind of behavior human identity uh often that's not there within within yeah. particularly the kind of empirical research that's very common in our field as well or if it is there it's it's very rationale kind of or or sort of um things of the of, of of human action as or of kind of human thinking and so on as completely governed by kind of rationality and of course that that i mean psychoanalysis immediately immediately puts a stop to that uh because that's not how humans humans work and i think we both uh feel that psychoanalysis is the most is the best and the most complex theory of human relationships, human uh, uh, interaction, um, human thinking, there is no other uh, uh, approach that, 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 that comes close to, to this complexity. That's why I think we are so, well, that's why we're so captivated by it. Mm. You know, just when you, when you said like that, you had it, was it in high school? Like when <laughs> um, we were bored by it? I did too, for my, like uh, pretty early in my A-levels, I had this German teacher who was who you know was interested in that and i can remember that he kind of presented the psychosexual faces the freudian faces to us and my response was not like that i was bored but i was really i was really troubled by that i was really like no you know you as a grown up like don't go there you know in a time when you're kind of confronted with like you know this kind of oh it's uh, like, you know, as a, as a teenager, kind of like uh, being so weighed down by worries about sexualities, like he, like he presented that to us. And I was really, I was really like taken, uh, taken aback by that. I was really like, I, that didn't go down with me well, but somehow this has stuck with me also. And I think this is quite often where I'm trying to take my students, right? Like, you know, like mm. it's exactly as you say, I go like where it hurts, right? But I like, but I'm also constantly worried by how, like by how, uh, by how difficult that must be for some of the students. Difficult to take, right? Difficult, mm. not even to kind of like accept it as a theory and the, then the nitty gritty bits of it, but just like, you know, take any of that in, like when you then kind of talking about the anal phase of sexuality, right? Like mm. how terrible is that in an academic context in which you're usually not hearing anything that goes beyond the waistline, right? Because it's all up here, right? Like thinking high abstract thoughts. <laughs> no, no, it's about... Mm sitting on the toilet <laughs> <laughs> i love it you get you get used to making other people uncomfortable <laughs> ah yeah i i you know yeah exactly one has to be a little bit careful that one doesn't get too much of a liking for it because like we are so super fun at parties <laughs> at parties it's like yeah exactly but like you know 10 15 as a kind of first seminar session of the day that's when uh... 8 15 <laughs> yeah no i don't yeah do but i think i yes I, I i i agree but i think what i i think what psychoanalysis is also very it's very um what it's very suited for very suitable for is countering or kind of um um going into sort of these debates or at least in theory it should should be able to do that going into these debates that are incredibly polarized and we see this in because you mentioned sexuality and so on uh, mm -hmm. just now we see this in even or maybe especially in academic uh discussion academic debates um, where we have these huge kind of moral panics that then con that then play out in the media or are then kind of um, transported to the media in in relation to, for example, uh, you, you know, widespread use of pornography or um, how young people use social media and so on. And even in even academics, very often they take a position where they're either completely against that uh, or where they're kind of saying, okay. 
these studies show oh um social media is so harmful uh, for young people it's full of uh, cyber bullying it's full of harassment it's 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 absolutely terrible or um uh pornography is so harmful for for young people um and 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 so on in terms of their psychosexual development or then on the other hand you also have um uh, uh, um, uh, experts and so on working in, in those areas who kind of say no that exact opposite is true um porn addiction doesn't exist it's all you know it's all uh it's all harmless or social media um is 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 really harmless and there's nothing we kind of need to we kind of need to worry about so very polarized discussions very polarized debates and of course politics has has become totally polarized and so on and um we also try to to kind of get into those debates and show actually it's not it's not that simple so it's not that in Kleinian terms it's not that paranoid schizoid it's not that clear cut where um this this is either bad or this is either um really really good or whatever but um we need to kind of um hold hold that in in mind with in its complexity and and i think mm -hmm. psychoanalysis can do that quite well and um so we do that for we as an example we, we so we could talk about we do that for example in relation to discussions of narcissism so um of course narcissism is a psychoanalytic concept it's a psychoanalytic idea um that is then has become completely disconnected from from psychoanalysis and then it's kind of used in terms of and by academics also in terms of said oh everyone has become so narcissistic and selfies are just embodiment of pure narcissism and 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 so on and we trouble that do you want to talk about you know through this idea of, of uh, uh anxious narcissism do you want to you yeah but yeah exactly so we um we've we've come up with uh, with what we've called anxious narcissism and it's really not a very new idea but it's like if you go into psychoanalytic conceptions of of narcissism there is this kind of um drive like a kind of desire to fuse with somebody else to kind of bind significant others to you to kind of like be become one with them again and what we kind of saw then in the selfie and in discussions of the selfie as narcissistic is kind of counter perhaps like a little bit counterintuitive um, in relation or in comparison to the to the mainstream discourse on narcissism that like you know the more perfect the more optimal you the more you try to optimize your 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 looks through filtering through lightning and uh, lighting through um on your selfies the, the the more perfect you try to look on your selfies might not be because you want to be that sole individual that rises above everybody else but perhaps it's also like um um an a kind of like way of making sure that you're being loved right like or that you receive love that that you receive the the recognition the kind of like the the attention by others that you bind others to you without mm. any ambiguity beyond ambiguity right so there's like the things that we've tried to work out that where we push the boundaries where we try to not only look at the damages but also look at the solutions mm. that are then damaging and the damages and the solutions so kind of where you have kind of tried to keep somehow in balance, like, you know, how people solve the problems in their lives through media, through their media uses, how that becomes damaging, but like, but how the solutions then also are there and need to be seen. It's wonderful. And psychoanalysis is so good at that and not like buying into one or the other point of view, but looking at things as multifaceted and complex. And yeah, thank you. It's so glad that you're bringing psychoanalysis more and more to media studies. Thank you. Thanks so much, Vanessa. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrapped up? Do you have anything coming up or anything you're working on now? Or oh, um, 
I mean, I, I, I've been working on a kind of uh, continuation of that. So there will be yet, like after Jacob's books, like because you have a couple, Jacob, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you're also working on something. I had something on the back burner, which I then like paused a little bit for Jacob and me to to write media and psychoanalysis. I am, I'm doing something along similar lines, which I'm calling formative media will be out in uh, Candida Yates and Caroline Bainbridge's Routledge series and popular psychoanalysis and popular culture, I hope sometime soon in the new year. So another book that you then can you have to come back. To the for. <laughs> Perfect. How about you, Jacob? Um, I no, I haven't actually, I haven't, uh, I haven't really, um, I haven't written an, a new book <laughs> then. Um, you haven't written a new book in the past couple of months. <laughs> Come on. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's time. Well, Perhaps it's time. Well, I still to... need to have you back for the one about masculinity because we oh, haven't okay. had a podcast oh, about yeah, I'm, that yet. I'm 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 happy to I'm happy to to return. Um look at yeah, looking at kind of yeah, online mis we we talk a little bit about online misogyny in in this book as well, in in cells and so on, but I then I have done that in much more, much more detail in my in my online misogyny uh, book, mm -hmm. and why again? I mean, again, psychoanalysis comes into that because uh, again, it's never just about misogyny. So there is always uh, one might one might see all these kind of uh, expressions of toxic masculinity and Andrew Tate and all these people online, Jordan Peterson, all of that, as as being about misogyny. But that's just on the surface, and there's always more to it. There's always more um kind of contradictory aspect inherent in kind of hatred in uh misogyny that that are actually also about love and again about recognition so so the 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 challenge is to as we also then kind of talk about in the book's conclusion is to transform um this this sort of idea of objectification to transform it into what we call uh transition objectification don't we so 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 if that will will it's in the conclusion we won't say more <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's you have the to get the book part. yes media and psychoanalysis a critical introduction well thank you guys i'll talk to you thank again you. soon <laughs> we'll be in touch thank you <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Bye.